the Nigerian youth is not a lazy creature at all. Yeah, welcome on Naval TV Live from this wonderful edition, talking on a topic uh, that has been so glaring and the faces of Nigerian youth, uh, which is actually a Nigerian youth lazy. Why this overwhelming crave for wealth? Uh, why is it this moral dependence among our youths? Uh, why is it that our youths don't want to respect the laws of getting rich and getting wealthy? Of course, we've we'll been in the studio to tackle this matter. This our elder. Yes, I call her elder. It's an elder because I've had all the vast experience of Gray and Mona. Gray and Mona, welcome to Novel TV Live. Thank you for the privilege. Yeah. We talk about, in the last episode, you talk about the moral decadence, the norms yes. that have gone weird yes. by technology advancement yes. and the external forces. Yes. And now, I actually Nigerian youth lazy. And what has gone wrong with that Nigerian youth want to make it at all costs and by whatever way is was it the same way in your your, your era okay so it's a three-pronged uh, inquisition mm. and Nigeria is lazy why are they in a hurry to actually you know uh, opt for the uh, sh shortcuts has it been like this yes. progressively so let's start with the first one mm. and the first one i would like to be you know definitive that the Nigerian youth is not a lazy creature at all Progressively, Nigerian youths have never been lazy. If we use any criterion, platform, institutional, or you know, systemic, the Nigerian youth has been, you know, an achiever. You see, it is uh, only scientific to to use maybe historians talk about periodization. If you want to analyze a, you know, a historical material, or developmental material, when Nigeria became independent in 1960. Between 1960 and 1966, there was buoyancy, you know, among the, the, the youthful population. Don't forget that the mean age, yes, yes, they said what they did was negative. The, the five majors that struck on January 15, 1966. They said they, they brought down democratic, uh, the democratic system. But I'm talking about the adventurer spirit. I'm using that one to to attack the notion that the Nigerian youth is docile, unrevolutionary, mentally and intellectually lazy, that this, this, this are not believable. The mean age among those five majors, 27. Chuku Manzogo was born on February 23, 1937. Emmanuel Ifajuna was within the 1937 by 1966, was a young man, 20 something or thereabouts. Adem Uyega, Okafo, and Chukuka, they were all young people. You see, when the Nigerian Youth Movement was formed as prelude to independence, it was built, conceptualized around, around young people. Awolowa was not Methuselah when he was uh, angling for you know, independence. When Zeke returned from the United States with a barrage of degrees, Zeke read so, uh, sociology, anthropology, law, political science, history, and so he was a young man. So when he challenged the colonial status quo, because of fear of the world, he went back and started West African pilot. He was a young man. Herbert Macaulay, the engineer, was when he struck the court of the colonial order, he was young. So progressively, politics. Then, uh, Sir Louis Odumegu Juku was one of the richest, as uh, the Dangote of, the, of Nigeria's 40s and 50s. He made Chukwe Meka Odumego Juku. Uh, sorry that I got to be emotional about him, because anytime I mention Odumego Juku, I must call him Ezibo Burburu, DK Diorama, Ikemba Newe. It was Sir Louis Odumego Juku's industrial you know, favor and ambition that made Juku very comfortable as a student of King's College, Lagos, Ikoi. He was, he, was not, he was not very old. So progressively, you know, through the 70s, and 80s, yeah, yeah, we, we, we've never had cases of, uh, you know, languor and uh, being diffident, not willing to explore. It has always been, the energy has always, always been there in the Nigerian youth. So the Nigerian youth has been ambitious, always wanting to, you know, eke out a living. Um, 1966, Commonwealth Games, Nigeria was led there by a young man, Sam Igun, 
who was a policeman. Because those days, it was a place that dominated athletics and football in Nigeria. You had John Okoro, you had uh, Sam Igun, you had uh, Alex Omede, who was goalkeeper for Bini Wanderers, you also had uh, uh, Sonda Tuma, you, so many of them. They were young people. Violet Odogu, who later married uh, Senator Mwaji, he was Nigeria's female captain at the at what age? 19 years. 19, one nine. Young, young woman. Jumoke Bodurin was young when she wrote. So, progress, there's no way. In music, youths made it. It was, this, it was a favor to make it as a youth that immediately after the civil war of 1967 to 1970, the Igbo returned to the scene, you know, with a, with a bank. They established Enugu Rangers in 1971 with Chief Jim Wobodo, Jerry Nyazo, and Polano Sinzerim, young people. They moved over uh, to music. Strangers of Oweri formed around Bob Miga, Funky Safaba, Wings. It's a favor, youthful dynamism. So, uh, whoever said Nigerian youths are lazy, I think uh, it's one of those fantasies. Uh, you look at uh, a phenomenon, you don't want to see the truth. Then, to the second issue, um, whether has it been like that or something? No, the, the, no, the, the quick way. The quick, way. Short. the quick way. Yes, it has never been a feature of the, the, the perceptual tendencies of Nigerian youth to make it equal. No way. 60s and 70s, young people were aspiring for the best. On radio and TV, I proudly I used to refer to the immediate past commissioner for finance, Sir Fidelis Okemo Tilije, as one of the examples of youthful dynamism. As a pupil at Esumuku Primary School, Obiaraku, Umusume Obiaraku, he made a very good result. He went to St. George's College of Binoba and passed out in, in, in a glittering record. Moved over to University of Lagos. Youth. Sir Augusto Bikeke, who also retired as a permanent secretary, made it to University of Nigeria so as a young man. The immediate past governor, Senator Dr. Ifani Ato Okoa, was the best student at Endo College as a student, a young man. And in that glittering posture, he went to University of Ibadan and was one of the best medical students at UI. Young, that's amazing. All these, they, they, they used to subscribing to the value system of struggle and get there before you jump hurdles. My eldest brother, before he left for the US in 1971, he after, you know, posting glittering records at Robo College as a young man, he went and took a, another, about six papers in the General Certificate, Certificate of Education. That was from London, then he goes up to Africa. He made one decision about four subjects and two others. Then the emphasis among youths was struggle, burn the midnight oil, and ensure that you get there. Yeah, thank you very much for being with us today. You, yeah, this is where we come to the end of this very wonderful episode of uh, and I did not youth actually lazy and of course, I mean, it's been shared upon very extensively uh, for you to learn and of course uh, to know how best to handle your next step of success. My name is Chibi Peter. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and press on that notification button to get more updates on Double TV Live. Alright.